Hello, and welcome to the Darkest Timeline. Uh, film podcast. Hello and welcome. My name is Dylan. I'm Ian. I'm Brett. And this is the Darkest Timeline, the podcast where we talk about bad movies and follow actors from those bad movies to other bad movies. If you're wondering where Dave is, who usually announces the podcast, he's not here. So Dylan's doing it. Yeah. Dave might be dead. Okay. That's all we'll say. (laughs) Yeah. Dave's dead. That's why he's not here. Dave's dead. He'll be brought Uh, back to life by a blind shaman next week. (laughs) But forget about all that stuff about uh, following bad movies via other actors, because we're not doing that right now. We're just uh, hopping on the gravy train of Daredevil Season 2 on Netflix and uh, watching movies about people who were in that show. Sort I mean, of. not the people, the, uh, the the characters that were in that show. Yeah. Uh, last week we watched Daredevil from... Two th- 2004? <laughs> Daredevil. Shut up. Daredevil. Dare- La- last, week we yeah. watched, last week we watched Daredevil from 2003. And this week was Elektra, the spin-off sequel kind of movie... To that from 2005. Starring Jennifer Gardner. Jennifer Gardner in not quite as good a year as 2003 for Jennifer Gardner, but, yeah. you know, her and her masculine features are doing okay. <laughs> oh, God. Well, it's really just her face that's masculine. Well, yeah. That's a pretty masculine body. She looks pretty t- strong. I don't know. I'm just going to leave a long silence after you say masculine body. Oh, God. <laughs> because it can <laughs> You this should is, watch what you say. This is not fair, guys. You're right. Hey, man, don't you blame me. I produced this. When you're, like, on a roll on something you love talking about, I'm just going to cut right in with, uh, uh, Dylan screws this all up for everybody. Dylan's the edit master. That Ooh. sounds like a compliment. Oh, I just, I just noticed that he's going to put that in the podcast. That Dylan, was a compliment. Is the, Dylan is the edit master. Oh, oh. Thanks, <laughs> no. Brett. Thanks, Brett. You're a real great you're guy. You're giving oh. him sound bites, man. Now I, now I know what it feels like to be like a famous actor with paparazzi following you. <laughs> so misquoted all the well, time. That's not what this just is like. Just do what, yeah. uh, <laughs> I think it was Daniel Radcliffe had that problem. And what, what he decided to do was just wear the same clothes. Like, he had a bunch of pairs of the same clothes, so paparazzi just didn't take pictures of him anymore because they couldn't prove when any of the pictures were taken. You're kidding me. No. That's awesome. Yeah. That they is. would just feel like he's just wearing the same clothes. This is no different than the last picture you took. Uh, so this next, we're going to talk about the plot of the movie. Ooh. But, because, we, you know, we're usually going to go through the whole plot, but it takes way too long. Sure does. And, and it's it not funny. Uh, it's, not, it's not very funny. Last time it was a little bit funny because... It was such a crazy plot, but and I suppose this time it could be okay too. But we're gonna we're gonna do a different thing now with I the love plot, it. cool? Because because we really needed to take less time. And this movie sucked. You can you stop with your negative attitude. <laughs> These not, guys don't like. Yeah, me. the <laughs> darkest timeline is all about positivity and film. Oh man, it's about <laughs> getting through it, and you don't get through it with pure negativity. Really? I feel like we really got through this one with pure negativity. I don't know what you're talking about. It was a negative movie. That little I mean, girl was really happy. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, <laughs> let's not talk about it. So, uh, Brett. Oh. You have two minutes to pitch me this movie. <gasps> no. Do it. I know you'll love to. <laughs> oh, God. Two minutes to pitch you this movie. Starting now. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, okay. It's 2005, right? We got Gardner, fresh off uh, Daredevil, and some other movie she probably filled Two in somewhere years there. Ago, dude. Well, yes, it's fresh, fresh movie standards, uh, and she's she's looking ancient movie standards. She's looking goodish. Uh, she she's she's worked out enough, and um, she's gonna come back as the as the role as Electra again, the 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 superhero that wears the brightest colors, so you can see her wherever she's at. A minute and a half left. You're running on time. Okay, and. Um, uh, so, uh, so, 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 uh, normally she fights just regular people, right? Oh, yeah, she's cut, cutting down the crime, whatever. This time she's fighting, like, m- mystical m- mist people. They're, <laughs> when they're alive, they're human form, but when they're dead, they just turn into green, like, fart gas. Um, and it's great, because it looks visually awesome. And then there's, like, a mini gardener. And she's like this cool person. I like how you remembered you were actually pitching it to me. You have a minute left. Oh, jeez, I have a minute left. It felt like five. Uh, so there's Mini Gardener. 
Uh, and she's got um, her fighting tool instead of the size, which is so cool, is jewelry. Yeah, Ra- yeah. She fights with she fights with necklaces, which is um, belts maybe. Be- no, it's a necklace. Could be. Well, okay, I'm pitching it. It could be a belt. Um, whatever, whatever it takes to get fashion going. Sounds good. You got thirty seconds. Okay. Uh, so so then she's got the uh, stick there, and sticks helping her, and sticks uh, old and. Teacher, not very much, and uh, he can't see. He's a blind guy. Uh, so Gardner's fighting. She's doing the stuff. She falls in love with this dad who might be a superhero, but he's real hunky and has no backstory at all. Um, and he really don't care about any of the characters. So uh, I don't know. Give me like maybe two million, three million. I could do this. Uh, well, that makes you two minutes, and I will give you a million for each minute. I'll take it. So you get two million dollars to make this movie. Good luck getting Jennifer Gardner. <laughs> tell well, you what, tell you what, I'll give you another twenty-five million if you can have a scene where there are a bunch of really crummy-looking CGI sheets flying uh, around. All right, I think I can do that. I can fit that in. Can, can we put it in, in the trailer? Sure. Can it look even worse in the trailer? Didn't even watch the trailer. So sh- why not? Neither did I. Okay. Because <laughs> we haven't made it yet. Oh, that's right. I forgot. I'm pitching still. Good job. Uh, you got oh, it. You're sold, man. <laughs> We are so on coke right now. By the way, I've never directed a movie before in my life. Thought you were the writer, but that's okay. I'll do either one. <laughs> Should, whatever you it takes to get the money, guys. You million yeah. dollars to do it, I will do it. <laughs> you can call me the janitor for all you want. I don't know how much this movie actually cost to make. Ooh, that's a good thing to look Whatever up. it was, I'm on it. let me tell you, it's too much. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh man, those sprawling vistas. 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 I like vistas I, better. I, vistas. <laughs> those sprawling vistas. Oh, the sprawling vistas of northern Washington. Northern Washington. Northern uh, Washington in winter yeah. after global warming has taken over completely. <laughs> yeah, because it was really sunny and warm. It was warm. such, it was so f***ing summer. I do not understand that at all. Well, it was bright outside. Yeah, it was, it was, we were guessing it was Washington for the longest time. Right. And then it showed a weatherman. Yeah. Pointing at Washington going, yeah, the storm's really coming in. And there was a storm going on. On Rain. Christmas Day. On Christmas Day. And it was Rain. just rainy and it was just normal Washington yeah. weather. On Christmas Day. <laughs> And, okay, if you're a listener from Washington, you can go ahead and tell us if that's legit or not, but I have this feeling deep in my heart <laughs> that it was bullshit. Wow, this movie got worse ratings than uh, Sorority Boys and then the other one that you were thinking about, Mr. Woodcock. Really? Those have better ratings. What does it have? This is a 4.8 out of 10. You have solid score. Whew. Um... <clears throat> You, 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 you did a very good, succinct pitch of the movie, I guess. Really? Say. Succinct? Succinct. It uh, felt like 20 minutes. It was minutes. two minutes long, so I, I'm just going to call it succinct on principle. Okay, fair enough. And uh, I think you, you skipped over the idea that Jennifer Gardner is, uh, is an undead ninja in this movie. Oh, how could I and forget? And uh, by the end of the movie, a mini Gardner is also an undead ninja. Forgot. Forgot about that. Brought back to life because it's kind of hard to make a spinoff when the main character's already dead. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's some other crap I forgot in there, too. God, I, I, you know, you can save it. Will do. For the worst parts of the movie. Oh, wow, yes. Or, you know what, the best parts. Mm. What was your favorite part of the movie, Brett? Yeah, we always start with the best parts. What was your favorite part of the movie, Brett? Favorite part of the movie, um, oh, boy. You know, hey, let me, let me, let me, uh, look at my notes. (laughs) Um, my first note says Electra in all caps, then (laughs) f**k. Um, said nothing more inconspicuous than a bright red outfit. Uh, I th- I'd say my favorite part was her OCD's uh, superhero uh, ability. I, I think it's the first OCD superhero there is. I don't know if that's true, but it could be. I mean, name another OCD was. Uh, when was that like? When was that found in the seventies, eighties? When did people start caring about it? Like nineties. When did monks start airing? That's a two thousand. Maybe. Oh, man. Our mom was really into that show. Really? We oh. got a monk bobblehead back home and put a Christmas hat on it. Santa hat on it during that's, Christmas. That's which a detail really for weird, you guys. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that's wildly irrelevant. Good yeah. job. <laughs> I would say that's my favorite part is she, she goes into the bathroom and it's like, 
it, there, it's like a warrior scene where she gets in there and she's unpacking. You think she's going to like, it's like that cool thing where like the assassins pull out their different guns and knives and weapons. You're like, oh, I want that. I want oh, this. And the music that was going to. Oh, so then she pulls up yes yeah (laughs) so then she pulls out her bathroom toiletries it's like yeah it's a hairbrush toothbrush like her morning daily vitamins i didn't even know superheroes needed those especially when you're dead i mean you got a multivitamin up man it's just healthy (laughs) you guys we are not um, promoting health. promoting um, specific Products? brands. I'm sorry. We're gonna oh. have to, we're gonna have to bleep that brand yeah. name. Oh, sorry. Just because we clearly vitamin. bleep multivitamin. <laughs> how about uh, how about Uno Adeo? <laughs> Come on. All right, guys. <laughs> I was, speaking of, of advertisements, I feel like it might have sounded in the previous podcast like we were being paid to tell you to watch Daredevil on Netflix. Oh boy. And, and we're not. It's just a good idea. <laughs> we haven't been around long enough for anyone to pay us to do anything. We, we've, we're getting nothing out of this. I mean, yeah. Did you hear the bad grammar in that sentence? What? It's the this sh- spoke talking. like I'm, two words. Hey, we can't say Oh, oh sorry. It's the brown ale talking. Yeah, it's the brown ale. <laughs> brown new ale. From somewhere in Britain. So Ian, what was your favorite part of the movie? My favorite part of the movie, I'm kind of, I'm split between. Whoa. Okay, Whoa. I am split between two parts, both dealing with stick. Rally. Yes. Do tell. Either, my favorite part is just something I choose to believe about this movie. <laughs> Not something that's necessarily true. Go ahead. But to fund his dojo up in the mountains wherever in China, <laughs> Stick hustles pool. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I forgot that Electra scene. finds him during in the middle of the movie. Doesn't find like, him. She knew where he was. Oh, she's like, yeah. oh, I know where he's going to be. And he's hustling pool in some pool hall in some city, but not in the mountains of China or wherever. Right, and it's like a it's like a secret underground, or no, actually above ground, but like secret like only pool. good, only good pool players go there. Yeah, only the hustlers play. Only there. the hustlers, and We're he's hustling hustled. the hustlers, yeah. man. Whew, and Hitman. they all know he's blind. They're like blind my ass, and he's just like, ha ha ha! I have superpowers, and I can beat anyone at pool. Yeah. And he, oh, that shot he made was really good. That I was gonna say, I want, I wanted them to rewind it, but they wouldn't do it because why would we do another thirty seconds of this crap movie? Yeah, I would need to, I would need to look at that shot a few more times, but I don't know, like, was it CGI? I mean, looking at the sheets later in the movie, I feel like it wasn't CGI. <laughs> yeah, because it looked True. too real. <laughs> yeah. Some, it, maybe they crossed, maybe they did a Snake Plissken where they, they crossed and it was a different actor coming in that can actually shoot pool. Maybe. maybe. My maybe. other thing I have about Stick is Stick's plan in the movie. What was that? Well, his plan <laughs> throughout the movie oh, was God, yes. when, when Electra was all angry in his dojo, oh. he threw her out. And in theory, made sure she became an assassin. Eventually, years later, gave her this contract to go and kill someone, but she doesn't know who, in some mountain somewhere where it's really scenic and nice, knows that she's going to go to these people without knowing she's supposed to kill them and make friends with them, then learn she's supposed to kill them and save them instead, thus growing as a person and becoming a good guy once again. There's a huge, that's a huge plot hole, actually. That's yeah. not a plot hole, that's just a horrible plot. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's not, thin plot. It's I know, unbelievable. But, but yeah. the foresight in that man. Right, like how did he, he know? Gave, he made her life go a really oh. dark path just to make sure she would save them in like right. five years. Like how many people did she kill But when he was like, okay, pretty soon I'm going to drop this one on her. Just a couple more people should die, though. I know. <laughs> well, I mean, when she was trying to find that one guy, oh, he yeah. was like, I moved around like three times and she killed everyone in her path to get to me. <laughs> That's like a hundred dudes or something. Yeah, they got families. They're working yeah. late nights to like feed their kids. Yeah, she is widowed, probably hundreds of women. Oh at this man! Point. Oh yeah. But you don't think any bodyguards can be women? No, I didn't see any women bodyguards though, because everyone that she was going after was sexist. That's yeah. fair. Yeah. See, there you go. Good oh one. yeah. Agreed. Just got Agreed. right on you um, on that. But that's I'm still all like hyped up from sorority boys. Oh, oh man! Don't <laughs> don't say that out loud. 
Um, yeah, that that is really funny that you say that too because it's like you there's n- there's no sense of time in this movie at all. You have no idea how long she's been with Stick. You have no idea like how long she been uh, he kicked her out. It seemed like it could be like a, a month or like well he said eight years. years at some point. I know, but you look at her; she looks the exact same in the flashback. Well, yeah, because it's, it's the, the same, same actress. actress. Well, obviously, I'm just saying, do some different her hair up or put a wig on or something. Yeah, they could have done that. It looked terrible. But I mean, that whole plan thing just came off in like a single line of dialogue. Right. So it's not like they put it forth at any point in the movie. Right. Ugh. Just like, and by the way, this is probably what happened to maybe kind of. And she's like, you did this? And he's just like, I'm not sure. even talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. All right. What about you, Dylan? So my favorite part of the movie was the uh, the super trendy Asian hip hop group of ninjas. Oh, yeah. That... Uh, <laughs> They were, dude, like none of them were Asian. I think three of them were. Maybe no, they no. weren't. I think it was one. No, there was the, the totally white chick, the yeah, black maybe. dude, the white tweaker, and the guy. No, who, there's a black tweaker. What, was it? No, no. The no, tweaker was, was a black guy. No, no, he was white. Oh, I thought he was black. He was just completely shaved from head to toe, I think. <laughs> which is also weird. And he was only wearing pants. Oh, yeah, he was. And, and he was holding coin. a coin. Yeah. Yeah. Did he have tattoos, too? Maybe. But they were meaningless tattoos. Yeah, yeah. and then there's Man Bun. Who or we don't know, because he just kind of died. There was like, like that co- coffee barista. Yeah. yeah. He had a ton of tattoos that came alive. Yeah. And that script he's been trying to sell but, for uh, years. It was, it was, <laughs> my, my, my favorite part was those people and their crazy inane power set. Oh. Magic. Because in Daredevil, it was like, okay, so some people are a little more athletic than they should be. Or a lot more athletic than yeah. they should be. Everyone was way more athletic yeah. than but they it was should like, have physical But it was like, okay, do. that's a superhero movie. Suspension of disbelief. Kind of broken, but still within the realm. Right. Whatever. I mean, yeah, Daredevil has, like, sonar and, and stuff like that now. But, but that's because he had chemicals yeah, spilled on yeah. him. Yeah, so, like, I'll buy it. Right. But then this movie eh. is, like, same universe, but magic is everywhere. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's magic-filled. And oh, yeah. the the, it's the like main the guy, the, the main bad guy who, uh, who wears the white cloak all the time, mm-hmm. he can, he zips around like he's a speedster or something <clears throat> like that. Yeah. What? Well, it's totally just magic, though. It's totally speaking. just magic, and uh, and then there's the the woman who who uh, makes death all around her. Everything is, that well, gets that's kind of like a superhero <clears throat> thing. Like, no, that's a, like a villain thing. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like superhero, as in like superpowers. Yeah. Super but power, it's like anything go. within like three feet of her dies. Right. Which is uh, kind of a crummy power. Yeah, and she like she blows like her f- colds and stuff on people. And yeah. They're like ah, I don't feel good. Oh, I think that guy died. Well, we never saw it. No, he was just coughing a little bit. I think he might have turned out fine. Yeah. I doubt it. I bet you it was the worst week ever, but he was okay. I mean, mean, he got to stay home and, like, binge Daredevil. There you go. (laughs) Watch Daredevil, guys, on Netflix, season two. Seen the first three episodes. Kick ass. There you go. By the way, we're filming this on the day it came out, so... Yeah. I'm wasting wasting my time here when I could be watching Daredevil. Yep. Thanks, guys. Um, Recording, not filming. And, and who was the other people? Uh, the yeah, the woman had the thing. The, uh, the the guy with the barista who had all the tattoos. <laughs> the guy <laughs> with the barista. <laughs> the the barista. <laughs> that was a sidekick. Hey barista, make me coffee quick. The barista with the man bun. Yep. The barista with the man bun. He's he has a bunch of tattoos and they come to life, but not uh. just like as animals. They're like. So Spirit animals that can like all fly, no matter what they are. Yeah, and they're weird too. Like the snakes come out and they're like missiles. They're like, Wee! Yeah. like they're like mouths are but glowing. Then he, only eventually they, don't they get on like the, horses. Well, eventually they get on the ground and you know and try and do because, somewhat snake like. Yeah. yeah, eventually when they could have just flown straight at her, right. or whatever. But apparently they don't attack you if you're walking up to the man's lifeless body that's meditating to make them move and, and he, just break his neck. And but you're his, totally good. His meditation looks like he's having an orgasm when he's doing it. He's like. Ugh. Yeah, he was. He's way into meditation. Yeah, well, like Barry's desire. That was uh, that was a sound bite. I'll use again. God. Actually, could you do it again without any of us talking? Nope. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I think I got enough of it. Oh boy. Um, I'll loop that. Yeah. If anything I say doesn't sound like I'm really saying it, and it's complimenting Dylan. Oh yeah. But, I didn't really say it. This uh, is gonna be cut out. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you can say all you want. Dylan's the edit master. It was really nice of you, Brett. Oh no, don't don't set me up. <laughs> Um, and then there's the, the really huge black guy who is in, invincible to anything but 150 foot tall trees. Yeah. 
That he walks underneath. That he walks underneath. He, no one had to try and kill him. He, he caused his own down death. down and walked underneath it. Yeah, he knocked it down and he walked He killed himself. It. It's it, a sad death. Isn't that like the loudest sound, too, when a tree is falling? It makes just like a gigantically loud sound. Yeah, it's, it's so like... He, yeah, he's dumb. He's dumb. Yeah, Apparently. Yeah. Well, he looked at the last second. And just was like, oh no, and didn't jump out of the way, and he had ample time to yeah. do so. Just he, like the uh, death woman, who uh, looked to see... Uh, you'll, you'll, oh. you'll probably talk about yeah, that. Yeah, we'll get there. Um, oh, that would have been your favorite, I Oh, that, no, that was a favorite thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, could have been, would have been. Well, uh, and then still talk. And then there is Tweaker with a coin, who never got to do anything, because he just kind of died. Oh, he was terrible. He's yeah, like, I he, got this coin! He, he held a knife against someone's throat, and then died. And that's really yeah. his Well, thing. he was killed. He didn't just sort of die. <laughs> he didn't just fall over <laughs> and turn into fart. He is well of... Yeah, you know, and that's the thing is when everyone dies, they turn into clouds of gas. Clouds of gas, which is never explained. Green no. gas. Well, so if you use yellow. if yellow you use green. magic and you die and you're not going to be brought back to life by a shaman, then you poof into gas. Yeah, makes no sense. No, nope, not even a little bit. What's your least favorite part, Brett? Moving on. Ooh, least favorite part. Um, my least favorite part would be the teenage girl, guys. <laughs> I hated her character so much. So. Oh, well, she was bad, so. She was bad. I, You know what? I can't say she was bad. She was doing good with what they're giving her, which is terrible. <laughs> the script is bad. The script is bad. The direction is bad. The direction is bad. The landscape was beautiful. Oh, the landscape was great, guys. This isn't the time for that. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, but her character was just blah. Like, everything she would say or, like, so the, there's a scene where they're running from the, the the cool hip hop Asian kung fu duos, duos. Du- I guess that makes it a that's be, five. Be a duo of people. duos actually. I don't know. Five, what's what do you call five? Just a group. It's a, group. a quintet? No. Quint- that's f- quartet. No quartet. Quartet four. four. Quintet's quintet's five. Quintet's five. Quintet's five. Yeah, okay. I had to write the first. You did it. You did um, it. <clears throat> yeah. So when, when they're running from those people, they hop in this pickup truck. They start moving away, and it's like, they should be, like, on edge, fearful, whatever. They're moving the away. They're, they're packing up all their stuff in their truck. Oh, no, they're just, Wait a minute, guys. we got to get the couch. You want to help? <laughs> Don't forget the cat. And then they drive away, and the guys are like, you're welcome. Oh, shit. Don't, don't make fun of what I just messed uh, up on something. Go, go ahead. Uh, so, on. so they're in the truck and they're driving and she just like, she catches, she, Jennifer Gardner looks over at the stupid mini Jennifer Gardner and stupid <laughs> mini Jennifer Gardner just kind of looks over and goes, eh, like gives her like a smize. It's like, why would she be happier? Like, cool. Like <laughs> we almost just got murdered. Yeah. We almost died. Hi. Thanks for driving by the way. Uh, can we stop at IHOP? It's like, this girl is terrible. Did I mention that she is a superhero that fights with jewelry? Yeah, terrible. terrible. Also, I looked it up, or I looked it up as much as I was going to bother looking it up. <laughs> I don't think she exists. They made her up for the movie. Oh, I'm not surprised. I know, but, you know, still, they could have pulled any number of, like, teenage superhero pieces of trash it, from the comics. Oh, and there's so many, too. Would have would made more sense. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Ian, what's your worst part of the movie? Least favorite, least I think, favorite. is what we're calling. Well, so, uh, so you're right. Saying worst, it what's means. What's your worst part? That's just, well, I really hated the worst part. I really hated the part where I was watching. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> where I was, where I was conscious of what was happening. <laughs> I'm gonna have to say that my least favorite part about the movie was this is a superhero movie, and already it didn't feel like one at yeah. all throughout the entire thing. But then they had to throw in the family drama at Christmas dinner during the movie. Yeah, yeah that, that was, was so like, unneeded. No. It like turned into like a Hallmark movie. Yeah, yeah. just for a bit. Like, Ugh. oh, she, the rip off little tiny Jennifer Gardner chick tricks Jennifer Gardner into coming to their Christmas dinner because she's like, oh, I'm sorry for stealing from you, which she did. And so my dad is forcing me to ask you to come to Christmas dinner with us. Only her dad didn't ask that. She's just trying to set her dad up with the woman who she met once and stole from, but thinks it's pretty cool. <laughs> and so then Jennifer Garter comes in. She's like, oh, I, I thought I, I thought that I was invited, but I cle- I'll just go. And it's like, oh, no, please don't go. Oh, please, yeah. oh well, I guess I could, but oh, yes, you could stay it's for like, dinner. It's yeah, it's oh, like good a, God. It's kind of like a cute... Like they're trying to meet upset, cute, and it yeah. was dumb because they've oh. met already. Oh. Yeah. yeah, and so then they just had a really awkward conversation for way too long, Great. and I don't even remember what happened next. <laughs> well, it was raining on Christmas uh, Day. She by the left. 
Oh yeah, she left. Oh that yeah, was it. she didn't even, she left she didn't even like leave. A ninja. She she disappeared mid sentence, and you could still hear the sentence. No, it was it was a mid syllable. It was you could, the yeah. last syllable she was saying. It cut back to where she was, and the syllable was still fading, and she wasn't there. Yeah, but it's not like her voice went away. It was still the same volume. Yeah, she was like like throwing her voice as well, she was like Well, she was still next to the microphone. <laughs> well, but then, it cut, <laughs> then it cut to her walking away, and she's just walking away. Yeah, she's just walking away, and not like, even that far from the house. Like, like he could just turn his back and be like. Oh, there you are. Yeah, like, he just wasn't paying attention. She just walked away. Yeah. And he was just like, oh, I looked the wrong direction. I'm Ugh, sorry. Terrible. Right. Um, my least favorite part is how seriously this movie takes itself. Oh. Oh, man. Because it was really serious about being, like... Thought of as like, good. Being, yeah. being a good movie and oh. being, like, powerful and meaningful and having heartfelt moments, yeah. none of which paid off. Missed the mark. It was just At dog all. Not to mention that it's... It's the uh, it's a lifeless love story sequel to a very lifeless love story. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't see how they were like, well, Ben Affleck doesn't want to do another Daredevil movie, <laughs> but we could recast him. Well, whatever. Or we could make a movie about Elektra, kind of. Well, I'll tell you this. I'm I'm now looking at the trivia of this movie. And it says here, Jennifer Gardner reportedly told journalists that she felt like this movie was terrible and that she only filmed it because she was contractually obligated from Daredevil in 2003. Good on her. Yeah. <laughs> she knew it was up. Yeah. And Ben Affleck made a cameo reprising his Daredevil role as Matt Murdock, but was cut from the final film. Oh, yeah. There's a uh, there's an extended scene somewhere. You can see that. Oh. Really? Yeah. Yeah, there is. I remember seeing it once. And does the scene have nothing to do with the movie? It's just like... Like, I think it's a flashback where it shows her putting up the Braille necklace uh, or whatever. Yeah. I don't remember where in the movie it falls, if it's, like, after the movie or what, mm. which wouldn't make any sense, because that would mean that scene in Daredevil takes place right. years yeah. later. <laughs> you know what? I would not pass it, put it past this movie to do that. Oh, yeah, and, and hope that nobody notices. Right, yeah. but this movie, is, it's just too serious. I mean, it's not serious, but it wants to think it is with that ninja hip-hop team. Right. <laughs> And by the way, that woman that was killing everything like three feet around her, yeah. that's Typhoid Mary, who's oh, a villain uh, in the Devil, yeah. Devil, uh, yeah, yeah, Devil yeah, yeah. Daredevil. Thank that you, is comics. A, uh, that's, a, that's a horrible adaptation of that character. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I think everything in this in this movie was a horrible adaptation of, of any character, any given character. Yeah. All the characters. Yeah, yep. the entire film. I, uh, I'll, I'll give you that one. <laughs> so, yes. a thing we forgot to do last week, well, but I should have done. I wasn't here for that part. Don't this blame is, me. This is true. I'm not blaming you. I'm just looking at you because you're across yeah. the table. Well, it's weird right. that you're looking yeah. right I mean, at my We eyes. didn't even introduce ourselves last week. We sucked last yeah, week. Yeah, it, it was horrible. It was bad. Bad thing. Um, <laughs> who's this for? And oh, what's you, the rating? You didn't do that last time? We yeah. totally forgot. Oh, wow. <clears throat> I think this movie is for, um, I'm using air quotes, comic book fans who would buy the comics and be like, yeah, I'm really into Electra. And then just like look at the photos and not really know what's going on. Like all the illustrations and then just be like, oh, I'm going to put that in my box. Yeah. Yeah. going to put yeah. it that's in my box. Work. That's how comics work, right? They take pictures of Yeah, they of just people, take pictures of it. Yeah. And then they, and they it's like, a, it's like a movie, but stills. They call them stillies. Guys, shut up. Stillies? Shut we we, we, we cut shut and up. shot this so I don't sound like an hey, what, do you mean, what do you mean shut up? You're the one who said that stupid Brad, thing. Brad, shut up you already. Just, you just kept digging yourself a bigger <laughs> hole. Well, I haven't had enough to drink tonight, is that's it, for sure. Is it not enough? No, it wasn't. I ran out of ice cubes, so I used frozen strawberries for ice. What? It Something. worked great. That sounds pretty good. It worked really well. What'd you have in it? What'd you have it was vodka with uh, oh, watermelon be... juice and grapefruit juice. Sounds pretty good. And then strawberries for ice cubes. Well, did you like cut little slices in the strawberries so then when they melted, they would have like released strawberries? Like, bl like a bl blossoming flower? Well, I'll tell you this much, it tasted delicious. And I ate the strawberries to try to get the last bits of vodka out of them. <laughs> That's how bad this movie was. <laughs> oh, so what? Oh, yeah, my rating was... Uh, sorry, I was just dreaming about vodka there for a while. Uh, so I give this rating a... Uh, I don't know. Uh, a five out of sequent comic book purchases out of ten. 
Does that make sense? No. Out of Try sequence. Again. Meaning like you got like number one and seven yeah. and eight and fourteen. Because you don't give a shit six. about the comics. Just really. buying yeah. a random. Like, one. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like the cover of that one. Oh, she is way more midwiff in this cover. I'm gonna midwiff. Midwiff. <laughs> <laughs> midwifery that's what that's what those that's what those uh, superheroes or supervillains were dying in midwifs <laughs> she is sense. yeah she is way more midriff in this cover so I'm gonna buy that midriff one midriff with a midriff 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 it's midriff midriff I don't know man it's the drift in the middle I'm not gonna question the logic Forts behind a, that phrase a, a rift between clothing oh there you go so midriff I didn't know they're fighting <laughs> Shirt, I hate you, pants. <laughs> <sighs> well, something that was really weird just then. I saw you. you watching it. You're like going through it in your head, going, huh, huh? Uh, "No, don't say it. Don't say it." <laughs> or, or the shirt is having is is in a bit of a is having a rift with the uh, with the stomach. It, it's trying to get away from the stomach. Or the stomach's trying to get away from the shirt. Can the happen? stomach's not moving. It's the shirt that's going away. Where has this conversation gone? I mid drifts, guys. Mid drifts. You can't veto anything. I am God here. Oh, boy. Hey, now. All right. Uh, uh, Ian, what was the uh, rating for this film? I honestly, this is my true opinion. I think this film was made for the theoretical audience of teenage girls who would go out to see a superhero film that starred a woman and a teenage girl. Oh, absolutely. And thus would then start buying comic books. Right. Right which is what they were going for. And I give it a zero out of ten. It failed like a... Oh, so just, just even failed those, completely. Even those teenage girls hated the movie, No, huh? they, no one liked this movie. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, some people like this movie, but they're wrong. But they're, but they're idiots. Uh, that's, that's, what I, that's what I was going to say. That's what wrong. you were going to say, really? <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> Make a new one up. Um, can I interrupt with something really quick? You can do whatever you want. The budget for this movie? Oh, Take yeah. a guess. Okay, can I actually can we go with um, how much it made and then go with its budget? Yeah, tell us how much it made. Okay, um, let's see. Opening weekend. I don't opening, care about that. Well, I'll, I'll give it to you both. Opening weekend did pretty good. Opening weekend had fourteen, a little over fourteen and a half million dollars. Mm. That's opening weekend. That's pretty damn good. Uh -huh. yeah. So after that, it grossed oh, okay. twenty four million. Oh. They only made $10 million after opening weekend. Dude, that well, actually, is a harsh you know, downturn. Fourteen's is pretty bad. And I imagine I'm going to say the budget was 50 Okay. Budget. I was going to say somewhere like 37 40 Close. Right in the middle. It's, it's $43 million. Ah. $43 million. Where did that money go? Not in the CGI budget. I'll tell you that much. No. That was made by like one of the Grip's nephews on the weekend. <laughs> I think I whoever did the CGI uh. on that movie is offended right now. <laughs> pretty, pretty severely offended. He should be offended by himself. That work was what shoddy. Was the, what was the budget for Daredevil? Oof, that's a good Just one. Let's wondering. see. I want to say it was less because they usually spend more on sequels. But that seemed like a bigger budget movie. <laughs> but Daredevil was a better movie. Okay, so. And it didn't look quite as fake as this movie. <laughs> and it had a way better director's cut. We watched the director's cut, and we couldn't tell you what was different because there was only three minutes added. I assume it was her organizing more stuff. Of yeah, exactly. Of, of Electra. Electra. What? Of okay, Electra. Yeah, I got the budget. What's your guess? Uh, more or less, first I'm off. I'm going to say more. Okay, and what's the number? 60. More or less? I will say less. I will say 35. Okay. It was more. Oh, okay. And it was seventy-eight million dollars. Seventy-eight million, but it they made it back, right? Supposedly, I, on here it doesn't actually say. It's, it says it grossed in the USA uh, under a half a million dollars, which can't make sense. No, no that, that that's wrong. That's not. That's right. not even possible. No, really. I know. So that's not correct. Wouldn't have made a sequel if that was the case. Unless it netted that much money, I don't know. <laughs> Go to box office mojo. You know what I totally forgot. What? That I was supposed to say what this movie is for and who is its rating. Oh, what, that's right. Go for what it. What this movie is for. <laughs> what this movie is for. Who is its who rating, is rating, guys. Oh, uh, I think I messed that up earlier. You did. You know what? Keep what is it. this movie for and who is its rating? This movie is for uh, 1996 Mazdas. Okay. And its rating is a solid Willem Dafoe. What Silence. you can Silence. you can read from that what you will. <laughs> I want to I want to give a shout out one of those. 
What's it see. for and who's the rating? Yeah, what's it for and who's the rating? Uh, <laughs> this movie is for a Easy Bake Oven. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm intrigued. And its, it's, it's rating is um, a young Kevin Bacon. Really? Mm-hmm. I would have given the Easy Bake Oven a uh, a Tim Allen, maybe. Ooh. A younger mm. Tim Allen. Mm. Prime time. Yeah. yeah. Home improvement. There you go. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Is that trademarked? Do I owe somebody money? <laughs> Ian, do you want to I try? don't play your games. Oh, boy. Oh, okay. You know what that sound means, everyone. It's time for another edition of... Absentee Presenter! That's right, it's the game show that occurs when one of the presenters on The Darkest Timeline thinks he has better things to do. Hosted by the Dark Lord of Chaos himself, Brynloft, the Destroyer, let's give him a hand. Hello and welcome. Today's contestant is David, and thank you for bothering to show up, to this at least. How are you feeling, David? Hey, Brynloft. I'm so excited to be on the show. This can be changed. First question, what was your favorite part of 2005's Electra? My favorite part of 2005's Electra is most definitely when Electra does the full-on Snake Plissken. The young girl is looking at her, the girl turns around, and all of a sudden, Electra is there in front of her again. Not only that, but later on in the movie, we see the main bad guy, one of the main bad guys in a, a sword fight with her, and you get a wide shot of him pulling a snake Pliskin, where he's like fighting with her, she turns around and he flat out like turns into a blur and is automatically in front of her again. So I just felt like this movie pulled the curtain on what it looks like to do a snake Pliskin when the camera is actually focusing on you. I'll tell you what, Davey, none of the other presenters called out random teleportation as their favorite part of the movie. Yeah! And what's more, you've activated our Snake Pliskin bonus for the episode. Welcome to the human race. So for this round, you'll be awarded three points. Booyah! All right, enough of that. Your next question is, what was your least favorite part of the aforementioned movie? The problem with this movie is it is just boring. It is set in the middle of nowhere. I think halfway through the script, they turn, the director turns to the writer and says, wasn't this supposed to be a superhero movie? And the writer's like, Shit, you're right. Let's get some bad guys in here. Because for the first half of the movie, it's basically Electra stalking outside a single dad's house in the middle of the woods. I've got to say, you're on a roll with the answers. Secondly, to... Seriously. sometimes Electra had green eyes, and other times she had brown eyes. And there was no rhyme or reason for it other than the CG looked terrible when they were putting green eyes in. You're the worst guest I've ever had. Is there anything else you want to get off your chest? Butler Steve, he was totally on point. That was rhetorical. Every scene, he makes sure before Electra shows up, he sets up all the fans in the room so she could, like, walk against the fans and have her hair blow, blow gracefully in the wind. And Steve makes sure that there are no lights bothering his, her eyes. He always makes sure that the lights have been moved out of the room so that she's always backlit. Yeah, the order loving prick. Back to my show. I'll give you one point for that round. You should have got more, but you wouldn't shut up. Are you f***ing kidding me? My show, my rules. Last question, thank me. Who's Electra for and what rating would you give it? The movie, not the girl. This movie is for people who sell stuff on eBay. Who would have thought you can get a magic amulet off of eBay that can destroy demons while also being able to shrink and wrap around your arm? I really hope that little girl gave the eBayer she bought that bracelet from a five-star rating. But I would say I would rate this movie a power seller. We got a broken roof out with a bloody airplane. That's better. I couldn't pay attention with all that noise up there. No idea what you said. I'll give you two points. Hell yeah! Well, that's all the questions we have for you today, Davey. 
and you've walked away with uh, six points. That's what I'm talking about. That's actually a pretty low score. See you next time, Davey. Not if I see you first, you dried up excuse for a c That is uncalled for. That is, that is rude and uncalled for. Get him out of here. Well, that's all we have for you today, listeners. So join us next time a presenter p***s out of his obligations for another edition of... Absentee Presenter! Now back to your regularly scheduled podcast. Anyway, so... Next... The next timeline movie we're gonna watch is going to be Mr. Woodcock, but that's gonna be in two weeks because we're still on our gravy train binge yes. of uh, movies that pertain to the current season of Daredevil on Netflix. <laughs> watch it. Um, <laughs> now, now on Netflix, season two. Daredevil. Yeah, yeah. Um, next week we're gonna watch the 2004 Punisher movie starring oh. Thomas Jane. Fuck, I didn't know that. How did I forget that? Brad, I don't know. I own that movie. Oh! I like it. Oh, I like it. Oh, no. I, at least say Dolph Lundgren version. Now, we decided th to do this one because... It's worse. Well, because it was it's the same time period right, as yeah. Daredevil and Elektra. It was made between them. I was, was just going to say, yeah. technically, it's not yeah. it's not after. It's between. Yeah. It's between. Yeah. It's, it's, we it's the same to, time. Right. We can't just split up the sequel thing. They're just, not in it, though, are they? No. No, okay. no, no. No, no they're not connected at all. Different production so. company entirely. Right, yeah. It's, wait, was Punisher DC? Thank... No. No, no Marvel. Yeah, Thank okay. God. Well, he's in the season of Daredevil. But he just said different production company. Yeah. Well, yeah, production company. I know, but isn't it always Marvel? Well, he was... That was, that was when, when the license, had licenses were oh. sold off, still. Yeah. Okay. Thank God they got him back. Thank yeah. God they got Mar Daredevil and Punisher back. Because there, there are a few comic um, characters that go from Marvel to DC. Uh, there were a few weird crossover events. We don't need to talk about that on this podcast. That's irrelevant. Welcome to Comic Book Talk. With comic Book Talk and Ian. He, don't, and Brett. Well, I'm just curating. You started this. I'm curating you, this you're one. You're I'm curating this one and also uh, interesting curating time. curating it? Yeah, yeah, curating it. You're curating the podcast? I'm a, I'm a docent. Over of, here. Of podcast. Over here, we have Dylan and Ian talking about yeah. crossovers between the Marvel and DC universes. On my right, universes. we have Ian. And on my left is a Dylan. Anyway, we're watching the 2004 Thomas Jane Punisher movie, which I've seen so many times. It's... <laughs> it's crazy. What was that guy's claim to fame, really? Okay. Tom Jane. Thomas Jane. Uh, he was just kind of in some stuff. Yeah. He was. He, uh, he literally like takes anything. He just wound up in. I mean, I like him. He's okay. He was. Wasn't he in Hung? Yeah, yeah, yeah he, he was in Hung. That was great. And he was. Uh, he was one of the bad guys in the second Crow movie. Ooh. <laughs> he was one of like the two second bad guys, and he dies. I think oh. in one, one of, of the those crew. booths that you like. Like, <clears throat> closed off watch a stripper in. Oh! Yeah, he dies in one of those. Yeah. Tom Jane, what the hell has he done that's good? Well, you just said hung. Well, yeah, but obviously besides I've that, never seen that. It's good. It is good. Okay. Right. He's in, he's currently in The Expanse, that a sci-fi series. Oh, I heard that's good. Yeah, yeah. we saw, like, the first episode. I haven't yeah. watched any more. It was good, though. Yeah. Well, good for We don't need to talk about that. Yeah. That's that's relevant to, to this Tom podcast. Jane talk. Yeah, we're gonna, <laughs> the Tom Jane cast. <laughs> the Tom Jane cast. The Tom Jane cast. We're gonna watch that movie next week. We should just call it Jane cast. Jane cast. Yeah. Before we leave you, is uh, that all we're gonna say? Um, we're good. We're good. Do you want to watch the trailer for Punisher? Oh yeah, definitely. I don't think we need to. Well, I, I, mean, I still want to watch it. He wants to watch it. I would like to see what they show in the trailer. Right. Let's see YouTube. Get over here. Right, well, let me find it first. That's I just got to start out and say that that trailer was the most 2004 thing ever. It had drowning pools, let the, let the bodies, bodies hit, hit the, the floor. floor in it. And that was only popular in 2004. I'm pretty and sure. And not even for all of 2004. Yeah, probably, probably like the summer. I don't even think that song's in the movie. I think there's a song from their next album in the movie. Oh, that's not good. That's such a good, terrible song. Yes, <sighs> that's, let that's, the bodies hit the floor. I love what does that even mean? Yeah. Like, is there somebody who doesn't let them hit the floor? I don't know. Like, they stop them? Um, <laughs> pick that up. Pick I, got, that up. I, got him, I got him, I got him, guys. I got him, I got him, I got him, I got him, guys. Yeah. Gonna, yeah. I, I no, no, just, no. Let I them just, hit the floor. I just cleaned there. <laughs> I thought it was Puddle of Mud who did that crap song. No, no. Okay. no. I liked that song in, two, in, in probably 2004 <laughs> when I was in high school. Uh, first impressions, besides that amazingly terrible song, is uh, that it's got John Travolta in it. Yeah, yeah. The beginning of that trailer is terrible. Oh, yeah. That's a horrible beginning to it a trailer. Is. It is. And it's like a good 
15 seconds. Yeah, it's just a bad end of that song and yeah. just the shots they chose just didn't work out. Yeah. And then like 80% into the trailer, they start having a deep voice narrating yeah. it out of nowhere. Yeah. That was very strange. Yeah. Tom Jane has a like great... Tom, it's Jane. Yeah, he's got that great John vocal fry. Travolta. He's got that vocal fry of that... Like Tom Jane has that. Yeah. Where he's like... Uh, yeah, so I'm going to talk to you. But it's like, what? Did someone, like, clean his mouth out with, like, a pine cone? No, he just no, got no, punched he... in the throat repeatedly from, like, when he was born until right before the movie started oh, being filmed. And yeah. before each take, just to make sure. <laughs> it's like okay, guys, like... I'm ready. No, you're not. <clears throat> oh, okay, I'm ready, guys. Oh, we're good. Okay. <laughs> All right, Tom Jane's on set, guys. Tom Jane's on set. Let's go. <laughs> Welcome back to Industry Talk. <laughs> Dylan and Ian. Is it, yeah, we were talking about the movie we're going to watch next week. That's yeah, true. That's that's fair game. That's true. Talking about the expanse and hung and shit, that's not. <laughs> I'm kind of excited to see this one, I have to admit. Well, I, I mean, like, it's going to be more fun because there's more like like crazy pointed destruction. Yeah. yeah. Pointed destruction. That's, yeah. That's a you good can thing. have more like, fun with that. It looks like there's going to be some really kind of stupid deaths in it too, which is going to be great. Yeah, there are. The This movie, <clears throat> 2004 Punisher, uh, is a movie that takes itself a little bit more seriously. Okay. But it's not. Uh, it's not too serious. It's not too serious, and it's it's uh, it's a little more well rounded than Electra. Oh come on, well rounded. It's more well rounded than Daredevil. It's got Kevin Nash in it. The basketball player. The wrestler. The wrestler. I don't know who Kevin Nash is. Well, Man. he's the Russian in the movie. Okay. When well, I say the, the Russian, oh, he's got the blonde hair. Yeah, yeah. When I say the Russian, that's just the character's name. He's the Russian. That's awesome. Kevin Nash. Yeah, that doesn't ring a bell. Was what was was that his wrestling name? Was uh, his real yeah, name? he was. He used his real name for a long time in WCW. He, he went by Diesel. It's a pretty good wrestling name. You know what? <laughs> this is also not part of the time. Welcome line. to WCW podcast talk with Two and Ian. <laughs> so, like we were saying, next week is The Punisher, and we'll two thousand four, two thousand four, and we will see you then. Yeah. In the meantime, you can go to our Facebook page, which is linked on our website darkesttimeline.bunnymetal.com that also links over to our Stitcher and iTunes. And, so, we have, and for some reason, which I, I can't fathom yet, uh, we put in links on our website uh, to Amazon where you can buy the movies. I don't know why anyone would after hearing us talk about them. It'd well, be I mean, some enough. people are kind of like masochists, I guess, you know. It'd be interesting to know if any of them sold. <laughs> yeah. like because of us. See you next week. All right, bye. Bye. That's a terrible ending. We should do it. Goodbye. Better. No, that's worse. <laughs> I want you to go. Is this a test, Sensei? No, not a test. Just go.